welcome back welcome back everyone so this section is going to be activity one and what you can see here is just some notes i made whilst i was reading the exam paper this is something i would recommend as well you guys will have the paper in front of you so if it makes more sense for you guys to make notes on a word document do that if it makes more sense for you guys to highlight on the paper in front of you using pen pencil highlight or whatever then please do that but i do recommend doing one or two of these actions because reading over the paper every single time you want a piece of information is probably not the best thing to do so let me go back to my exam paper here. I'll just have it open just in case I need to grab anything from it. I think my notes are extensive enough to cover most of what I think I need. I have picked out a few things I think would be the main things moving forward, but let us see what I have. So I said, PS, you should only consider threats, vulnerabilities and risks and protection measures that are implied and or specified in the set task brief. In other words, don't assume anything and anything that's not a threat a vulnerability or a risk there's no point in putting it right number one the things i've noticed when reading are as follows let me zoom in as much as i can hopefully that's clear enough freelance trainers and assessors use i'm going to try and give context as well as to why i think this might be important so that it makes sense moving forward why i've chosen that thing so when someone is a freelancer or a freelance trainer and assessors that means that they're not hired by the company directly your parents probably work for a company they most likely work for a company that pays them a salary every month so let's say your mom or dad is an accountant that works for an accounting firm what will happen is because they're hired by them they get certain access to certain things they get paid every month a freelance person is just some random individual that they found that can do the job that needs to be done and they've brought them in and they say for example you know what we're gonna have you for two three weeks to solve this problem or do these series of tasks that we want you to get done and that's it so this person will essentially have access to the system but not be hired by the company in my opinion the downside of this is that if this person were to be um evil or bad or nefarious or they wanted to cause problems they could because they have access to the system and they haven't been hired by you as a full-time employee so they can really then truly do what they want that's the first one there the next one says trade secrets held most likely on the servers again these are just notes i've made this wasn't um in the test paper this wasn't in the document this is stuff i have implied based on the information that they've given they did say trade secrets are held trade secrets are most likely going to be held on the server and not on a single person's computer so the server let's go back to our diagram sorry let me just come all the way down all the way down so the server or the servers which were here this is most likely where things are going to be kept files pictures videos images diagrams drawings whatever the trade secrets are code is going to be kept on the servers all right the next one i have is city center premises 19 floor for 20 story building so they're they're moving from essentially the countryside to the city center meaning it's going to be busier straight away uh, number two they're they're renting the space on the 19th floor of a 20-story building which means i can imply or infer from this that other people or other companies are going to occupy the same space not not the same um, floor maybe but there's going to be the floor above is floor 20 the floor below is floor 18 there might be other companies applying this um, occupying the same space the next one i have is public areas open outside of office hours bars and restaurants popular in the evenings the reason i made a note of this this tells me straight away that even though my uh, let's just assume i work at this place right it's a bit easier to explain let's just assume that um i am i've closed for the day gone home everyone else has gone home from my office from our office however the bars and restaurants above and below us are still operating so people can actually press the 19th floor people can actually get access to at least the lobby they might not be able to access the pcs and everything but the fact that they can access those areas means that they can i don't know go on their laptops or phones and maybe scan the wi-fi and attack the wi-fi as well i think i did put a wi-fi one later on as well but just as a note other people have access to the building as well other people can get access to our floor either by the stairs or by the lifts and if that's the case they can get physical access to be fair so if they really really wanted to they could kick the door in they could cut the locks off they could get in if they really really wanted to so that's why i noted that one there uh the lifts stairs and wcs are used by the public again i just mentioned that one so people use the lifts they use the stairs wcs i believe these are toilets don't quote me on that but i think wcs i've seen this on plans before and on house plans i believe that means toilet but you could quickly google it um firewall needed 
this was said to us later on but i did this as soon as i looked at the diagram so when i was looking at the diagram let me just go back to it quickly this is a diagram here and below there was some more information we hadn't gotten to firewalls yet and straight away i looked at the diagram and noticed a few things and i made notes of those uh vp are needed as well uh staff and visitor wi-fi wi-fi in general can get hacked so we're gonna have wi-fi in the system right so they tell us that we have guest wi-fi we have staff wi-fi wi-fi is hackable and it's not very hard to hack most wi-fi's unless you have a really super strong algorithm or or encryption key or whatever the case is right it's not very hard to try and get access to stuff like that visitors can also be client be a client they need more access or they need access to more things this could be problematic because let's say a client comes in because they're a client you think okay i'm working on their stuff anyway but keep in mind you have trade secrets on your server and if this person really knows what they're doing they could be lying they could pretend to be a client they could come in as a client and they could try to get access to your servers to your system and then copy off trade secrets from other companies and go away with it right so that's a big issue there potentially potentially the next one says freelance people will need secure access make the okay um some of this stuff i have here I've put extra notes beside it because while I'm thinking about why, what these problems are, I'm also thinking about how can I solve this problem? How can I eliminate this risk or this threat? So bear with me. Some of these notes will have answers, well, some answers beside it. So freelance people will need more access. Uh, again, I've mentioned freelance people at the top already. It's going to be the same type, type of thing. But the way I would potentially combat this later on is rather than giving freelance people unlimited access like i do my own hired stuff what i would do is give them temporary access so new details that they need to log in every x hours they have to use a vpn from home and when they do log in they have to request a new i don't know password every 24 hours for example because if i'm a big company holding trade secrets of other companies the last thing i want to do is to hire a freelance person who comes in and steals that information and takes it somewhere else so maybe this is a good way to do it uh, another one I said, using edX Celsius internet, no control, simply plug in. This could be very problematic because, let me go back to the diagram. Uh, they tell us, not this one, one second, the plan, the house plan looking one. This one here, it tells us services, internet access point, patch panel, fire alarm panel, electrical panel, etc. So, let's forget about, okay, there are quite a few things that we can pull from this, right? The fact that let's ignore uh, internet access point for now. This is a services panel, which means that there's probably be plumbing and all of that stuff in there as well. It's a patch panel. Not entirely sure what that means, but in most cases, you're going to have one big panel on a wall where other people can come and plug stuff into and fix and do all of that stuff, right? There's a fire alarm panel as well. So the fire alarm panel is going to be in the same location roughly, and there's an electrical panel as well. So we could have an electrician come in, get access to the system or damage the system in some way. The fire alarm panel, same thing. There might be a very small fire somewhere. Someone runs in there, gets something. So this is going to be something that's relatively easily accessible by multiple different types or kinds of people from outside the company, from inside the company, from upstairs, from downstairs, whatever the case is. The fact that you're patching in your internet through this point here could be problematic in a few ways. Number one, it's not your internet. You didn't go and pay a company to come and install it in your office in, in a locked room where it's super secure. Other people have access to it. Number two, the, the building owner, I'm guessing in this case is edX cell or something like that. Um, the building owner is the one who actually controls the internet. So even though you've patched in and you think everything you're sending and receiving should be secure, should be encrypted, they could easily be watching your stuff. So that's another thing as well. Uh, public areas open outside of normal hours. Uh, I think I mentioned this as well. But again, let me just quickly go over it. Why not? Because your normal working hours are from like, let's say 9 to 5. Restaurants are normally really busy after 5 p.m. when people leave work, right? So someone could break in and re your response to the break in is going to be relatively low. Because again, it's not your building. You might be like the second or third port of call. So the first person that's going to be notified is probably the police. And the second person is probably going to be the building owner, building manager. You're going to be the third person. So you're going to know that someone's broken in long after everyone else. So that could be a problem as well. Um, not anything severe in my opinion, but just so you know. Uh, EH provides cards, card readers, and card programming. So this one... Because an 
a separate outside entity is doing your security, right? So your your key cards essentially. So your key cards, so those cards that you tap onto the door to get in or slide inside the hotel room door to get in, and an external company is doing this. And they're probably doing it for people below and they're probably doing it for people above as well. So think about this. Imagine there's going to be an access list. So let's say people from your floor can only go to your floor and so on and so forth, right? So maybe someone makes a mistake one day. Maybe someone says, let's give this person building access and, and it, it allows them to go to every single floor in the building, your floor included. It allows them to get into your server room. It allows them to see your PCs. And if they can see your PCs physically and they can see the ethernet cables, they can potentially plug something in that will copy the information being sent and received and send it to them. So I know I'm reaching, but this is how I would think about it as a threat. This is a threat to me because I don't want another company controlling my security protocol. I would much rather buy the cards myself, buy the card reader myself and buy the card programming thing myself, or it be leased to me so I can control who I give a card, where the card goes. Because another thing is the person printing the cards and programming the cards, they could have a friend that they trust, that they think is okay. I don't know, a fireman, a, um, an electrician that needs to go and open the access panel or whatever. And they'll be like, you know what, just take the card and go. And that person could think, hmm, Nighting Floyd, that's that new company that has loads of rich clients. Let me go there and let me try and steal something off the PCs or the servers. Again, I know I'm reaching, but this is how I would think about it. All right, the next one is Singh is not a network specialist. This is probably the biggest one in my opinion because him not being a network specialist, him having relatively good understanding of IT does not mean he should be in control of a network. Um, yes, in most cases, you can find tutorials online and tutorials do come with the devices you buy and how to set them up in the best way possible. But him not being a network specialist means that at some point he will 100% overlook something. I'm an IT professional. I know about networks. I can set up a small home stroke office network, but I would never in a million years try to set up a network like this by myself without having had network training before. Uh, another thing is single switch means a single point of failure. Not really a massive threat or issue to be fair. It would just be sensible not to have every single thing in your network connected to one switch because if that one switch goes down, everything goes down. It's that simple. And also if that one switch gets attacked or someone gets access to, to that one switch, they get access to everything. So maybe having multiple, I would have multiple switches and I would definitely have one switch for maybe the servers by themselves. Nothing else is connected to that switch, but the servers maybe have another switch for uh, the Wi-Fi stuff. So maybe have a, um, the Wi-Fi access point connected to one switch and the staff Wi-Fi access point linked to another switch. Again, have multiple switches. I wouldn't have one. Uh, staff and visitors on different switches. That's, again, a note I made. Main router has Wi-Fi. Possibly turn this or, or have no Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's one. Let's go back to our image. So the main router here, that symbol tells us that there is Wi-Fi. And that's the main router that we have. Maybe don't broadcast the Wi-Fi of this router here. Again, this is the main thing that gets you out of the network and into the network as well. So the last thing you want to do is to tell everyone, hey, I am the most important thing in this network. Here I am, right? Because people might, in most cases, try to get access to you. So I would turn the Wi-Fi of this off, deactivate the wireless signal on this. And rather than having Wi-Fi for this, I would do what they've done for the guest Wi-Fi and the staff Wi-Fi, which is to most likely just have some wireless access point thing. If if you're in a classroom, if you're doing this in a classroom, if you look above you or look around your classroom, if you're doing VTEC Level 3 IT or um, in the corridor, there's most likely going to be a tiny white black box connected in the roof or wherever. And there's going to be an Ethernet cable plugged into it, most likely. That's going to be your wireless access point and that's going to link directly to a switch upstairs in the IT building in the IT office somewhere. And what's going to happen is that your Wi-Fi isn't the main Wi-Fi of the router given to your school or college by, let's say, Virgin, TalkTalk Talk, or BT. They've simply connected your wireless access point to a switch and then you go to the switch and the switch goes to the router. So there's something in the middle that's checking and doing work for you as well. It's never a good idea to always i will to broadcast the main wi-fi router or switcher or whatever it's always a good idea to have a secondary one 
sorry, uh, that, that was a bit long-winded. And server ACL to limit access. Because we have a server, which is where servers down here, and because we have a single switch going to it, and because we have people connecting to the staff Wi-Fi and uh, um, the guest Wi-Fi and all of that stuff, what you should ideally have is what's known as an access control list. I believe this is one of the words that um, are on the spec as well. So this is one of the words that you should know or you need to go and know. An access control list simply tells you who has access to what and who has access to it um, when. For example, as a freelancer, I might give you access to stuff on the server that's not super secure, but you might only have 24 hour access. Also, you might not be able to edit anything on there. Whereas if you are the manager of a specific department, I might give you access to everything on the server. You will be able to edit things and run things and open things, right? So an access control list is, as his name states, um, is a list, literally a list in like a text file or on the router or on the switch or on the server telling you that my username might be, I don't know, King Boss, right? And King Boss can only access stuff in the IT folder. He can only open stuff in the IT folder. He cannot see any other folder from psychology, sociology, maths, English, nothing else. That's all he can access because the access control is tells me or gives me permission to access specific things. So that's it, I believe. I didn't make any more notes on this. I think that was exhaustive enough. Um, I'm going to stop this video here because I don't want it, I don't want them to get too long. I'm going to try and keep them as short as possible with as much information as possible. So sorry. In the next one, I'm going to actually show you guys um, the risks I picked up. I, I think I only did about five or six. I don't want to go overboard. But as between six to eight is like a good number to have in my opinion. So thank you for watching. Hopefully that was useful.